man. Uh, we, we have our uh, sister Abigail, who is the MC. Today, I would hand over to Sister Abigail. So you can take over. Thank you very much. Uh, um, hi, everybody. Good evening. Good Next evening. Thing. Next on our program. Good evening. Next on our program, we have testimonies. So I would like to invite anyone who would like to share testimonies or if you want to share your quiet time with us, um, I'd like to invite anyone who is willing to share a testimony with us or a song. Is there anyone who wants to share a testimony or a song, or the with us. Well, I think that's what I was trying to share, but her network just went off. Okay, so um, I have something short. Um, I that came to my mind during a discussion this morning. Okay, um, a class okay. that um, with regards to being influenced with regards to what is going on in the world now. There are lots of things. Have I been muted all this while? No, no, we could hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> there are lots of things that have become normal, which actually should not be normal, like normalizing certain um, sins or way of life that as Christians, we shouldn't believe in. And as Christians, God has called us to be light, meaning um, though we find ourselves among people who have chosen to take a particular way of life or people who see things from a different perspective, we should always make sure that we do not allow them to influence us. Rather, we have to stand up and be bold and influence other people. It's very, very easy to call into your shell when you meet such people, especially when they are saying things that you know you, you are actually doing. This is a funny one, but like one time, it's, it actually has nothing to do with what I'm seeing, but it's an example, right? One time I was at work and um, some people were talking about something you put in your mask and someone said that that thing, you are not supposed to iron it. And someone said, well, who irons her mask, you know? And there I was every day, I iron my, my mask before I wear it. But it was, it's like all the people around felt it's very strange for you to iron your mask. I couldn't now speak up that, oh, people actually iron their mask. I'm part of them. You know, I just kept quiet, you know? So it's one of those things and it applies to our faith too. Sometimes you go to a place where people talk as if something is normal, but you know, it's not normal. We shouldn't be afraid to come out and speak out. We should rather take it um, upon ourselves to influence the people so that they will know that there is someone who is doing something different and she's ready to stand for her faith. Amen. Amen. My scripture is um, 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Um, do not allow anyone to despise your youth, but rather be an example to the believers. Amen. Oh, I think the Savvy Girls Network is um, on table now. So anyone else? Let me just okay. step in. <laughs> okay, can I share? Yes, please, you can. Please, I hope you can all hear me. Yeah. Yes, please. It's always good to be back here again. It's always a blessing. I want to thank God for our lives. I want to thank God for his goodness towards me, my family. Lord, I am so grateful to him. And this week through my quiet time, you know, I, I found something in that's the uh, Philippians chapter 4, 6, to, uh, especially the 6, where he says that we should be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by, by prayer, supplication, together with thanksgiving, we should make our request known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guide our hearts in Christ Jesus. 
this is what I left as I was meditating uh, on this word that is stuck with me. The fact that in a through prayer, we actually find the we, we find rest in God. And so the very prayer, the fact that we always make ourselves available to fellowship with God assures us of rest. His presence around us even bring us rest. The fact that we are engaging him, talking with him, bring us rest. And so I will encourage all of us, I may not know what you are going through and all that, but never stop uh, praying because in the prayer, you are going to find rest. In the prayer, you are going to find peace. And this rest... There is nothing around that is able to give a fellowship with God. So that's what I had a little I also have to share with my sisters on the call. God bless you. God bless you too. Sister Vera. Okay, please, is there any other person who would like to share their testimonies or their quiet time? Okay, God bless us. Oh, God, God bless you so much, Sister Ru and Sister Vera, for sharing such powerful um, thoughts with us. So, without much ado, we'll move on to the next item. And that is, we will be receiving our um, resource person for today. And to introduce our resource person for today is our own sister Vera. And so we want to welcome her to introduce our speaker for today. Thank you, Sister Abigail, for that honor uh, of introducing our speaker for today. I thank God so much for, for her life, for the life of Mrs. Teresa L. Siasai. Yes, and actually she has a sweet, wonderful name. I call her Mrs. Kosti, Koski. <laughs> okay, our sister yes, today, she is the CEO of El Koski Professional Consult. And she is a beauty consult, a consultant where she, she runs this beauty consultancy firm. She's married, yes, and I have to say that her husband is a powerful worshiper in, in our church. Actually, we fellowship together in the same church, Pentecost International Worship Center. And she's a wonderful Sunday school teacher. So you can imagine she has a lot of children, a lot of them. Actually, I see and you see the, the fact that this woman has a heart, heart, heart for children. Wonderful thing. Nothing, naughty thing does not go without her noting. Yes, so she so she said her children loves her so much. And I, I thank God that we have her to 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 discuss and also minister with us today. So Mrs. Uh, you are most welcome. This is evangelical ladies. We know that God is going to use it to teach us wonderful things today. And audience, please, this is Mrs. Elsie Asa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to seize this opportunity. Thank God for our lives for this day. Let me also appreciate the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak with distinguished ladies on this platform on the topic my health and fitness matters we also focus we are going to focus on fitness fitness is going to be the main focus but we'll talk a little bit on health but our main focus will be on fitness and as uh, we all know the bible says in second timothy chapter 4 verse 7 to 8 and i quote for physical training is of some value but godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present life 
and the life to come. So the Bible also, the Bible is talking about sickness, not just the spiritual aspect, but our physical aspect, our physical lives also. So today we are going to concentrate on fitness, but we'll talk a little bit about health. So um, I would love to share the slides for everyone to have an idea as to what we are going to talk about. Please, can everyone see it? Yes, we yes. can. Okay. So, um, definitions, we talk about health. We know we all, we all understand what health is. So when we say health, what is health? So per WHO definition, health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And my personal definition for health is a state of one's physical, social well-being in which disease is absent. What do I mean by this? One can be healthy, one can be strong, you can say that, oh, I am strong, I am healthy, but yet still, mentally you are not stable so if you are not stable mentally meaning you are not healthy um please am i making sense hello yes, yes. please you are hello hello can you hear us oh, okay so when we say health i mean being physically and mentally well and stable so if one and it can be vice versa you can be healthy, I mean, physically, but mentally, you might not be healthy, you are not, you might not be stable, sorry. And when one is not stable, I mean, um, I, I, how do I even put it? When, when one is not healthy, there is um, a concern. So we in, um, it involves, and um, health also involves a Health also involves every system of the body, and it is only achieved through a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So if, um, let's cite an example, when, um, excuse me to say, an example, when you are alcoholic, you drink, I mean, when you drink, you smoke and all that, this kind of lifestyle is not healthy. But when, when you live a healthy lifestyle by taking in um, a balanced diet, I mean, you take in the right um, proportion of meals and you are stable, I mean, mentally, your well-being, I mean, everything, I mean, you are classified as healthy. The bodies are, the bodies are designed to promote health through adapting and adjusting to changes called, called homeostasis and well-being. So when we say homeostasis, it is a property of cells tissues and organisms that allow maintenance and regulations of stability and constancy needed to function properly. So what do we mean by homeostasis? It is um, property, there are cells within the body that helps the body to function properly. So when this homeostasis, it's not in, if it is not functioning properly, meaning there is a problem, so in all, we need to take our health very, I mean, very, very seriously by checking our diet, I mean, physically, mentally, in everything that we do, our lifestyle must be well, well 
as um, the Bible says that, talks about it in um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, as the Bible talks about. So we believe that, I mean, being healthy, it is as young ladies as we are, we have to look healthy and strong. It helps us also, it also helps to improve, um, uh, I mean, it helps in our daily activities. Um, and the well-being of a person, it's also part of health, I mean health. It is also, it also promotes other areas of life. Having enough sleep, having someone to love and being loved, enjoying hobbies, so when you don't have enough sleep, it has a toll on you, the individual, I mean, your body. It has a toll on your health. But when you have enough sleep, it is, WHO says one per a person should have at least eight hours of rest. So if you don't have this amount of rest, it has an effect on you. And when you are loved by others, and you also, love is reciprocal. So when you love and you are being loved, you feel at peace. You are always at peace with yourself. And when you enjoy doing hobbies, I mean, the things you love doing, it makes you happy. It makes you a better person. And so now we are through with um, health, but our main focus is on fitness. So when we say fitness, what is fitness? What comes into our minds? We always say, oh, when I wake up in the morning, I do a little stretches, I am fine. I am this, but what goes into fitness? Fitness is physical, being physically fit and healthy as a result of exercise and proper nutrition. It may also be a physical activity that builds endurance, including work, walking, swimming, dancing, and other sporting activities. So the fitness, you can do the exercise within the confines of your home. Every day, it should be something, it should be a routine, something that we do to keep healthy and strong, to keep our, our muscles in shape, our bodies in shape. So some of the activities that we have to do, some of these activities include aerobics, anaerobics, Stretching and flexibility, squatting, skipping, dancing, swimming, biking, climbing stairs or hills, playing football, tennis or basketball. So when we say aerobics, what is aerobics? How does it, how, what is aerobics? I mean, not everyone would, in a layman's um, understanding, what is aerobics? Aerobics um, in your room, you can do it in your room. You can do it when you go to the gym. Those who visit the gym, sometimes before you start any vigorous exercise, you do aerobics just to warm up at least 20 minutes. So you do the play the music and then you move with the rhythm like you are dancing, but you are just something like you are standing at a particular place, you are stationed, but you are marking time. That is warming up, doing the aerobics. And the importance, it improves muscle strength in the lungs, the heart, and the whole body. It also lowers blood pressure, improves circulation and blood flow in the muscles. Brisk walking or jogging, squatting or dancing is also another form of aerobics. And then when we come to anaerobics, this is an excessive exercise to build muscle power. It involves weight lifting when someone says, i want to i mean um is it much in quotes much bodybuilding they do weight lifting press ups and do skipping because you do with the um anaerobics it is more intense than the aerobics and then we do the stretching and flexibility that involves muscle conditioning, stretching, and that is yoga. I'm sure we've heard of yoga. Yoga is another form of exercise. It's 
um, it makes you um, meditate. It is more of meditation. So when you meditate, it calms your, it calms the nerves. That is another form of exercise. So when we go back to the exercise, we have the benefits of exercise. It reduces the risk of developing several diseases like vascular diseases, that is hypertension. It improves quality of life. It boosts the endorphins, that is hormones secreted within the brain and nervous system. Endorphins, they actually, it's actually a hormone that the body produces to ease pain, to make one calm and happy. So how does this endorphin work? Um, say you are so stressed up, you are so tired, you have muscle pains, and when you go through massage or you take a warm bath, you feel so calm, you feel so, you feel at ease, and it makes you happy. You are able to relax, you are able to sleep. That is the work of the endorphins, and it boosts confidence and improves mental health. So these are some of the important benefits of exercise. So risk of not exercising. Not everyone has the habit of exercising. We are all at fault or we are all guilty. Not all of us exercise daily. Sometimes once in a while we remember that, oh, um, we say that, oh, I'm putting on weight, weight, so I have to exercise to shed off a little bit of weight, or we don't exercise at all. And when we don't exercise, some of the risk factors, lack of exercise shortens lifespan. It increases cardiovascular diseases and hypertension, sorry, diabetes. Diabetes in the sense that the food that we eat, it's uh, it's more of carbohydrates and the carbohydrates, it converts into sugar. So when you eat and you don't exercise, you don't shed off any of the fat and you don't, you don't do anything, the sugar accumulates and that also triggers and then it causes diabetes. At what age should one keep fit? At what age should one keep fit? There is no age limit to exercise. Kids are always active. They run around playing, jumping, climbing. It is also another form of exercise. However, there are limitations to the type of exercise. Um, at the age of 20, the body is still developing into adulthood. Energies at this stage is high and usually not problematic. So you do a lot of exercise. You can do all the, I mean, because you are energetic, you can do all the exercises that you want. At this stage, you can play football, vigorous exercise. Let me put it that way. But at the age of 30, the body begins to lose muscle strength and bones. Also, and it also begins to weaken. So there are certain things that you wouldn't want to do. You wouldn't want to stress yourself so much. At this stage, the body doesn't produce new cells. It produces new cells, but it's a slower, unlike someone who is 20 and below. So you don't, you do exercises, but not so vigorous, unlike someone who is younger. And at the advanced stage, one may be required to have an exercise routine because our bodies begin to slow on metabolism. And when we say metabolism, it is a process by which our body converts what we eat and drink into energy. So when um, 
our bodies begin to slow down on metabolism and it makes it easier for us to gain more weight. The weight gain increases risk of health problems. So we are I'm always advised that we do exercises. We can do jogging, we can do brisk walking. I mean, we can do a little stretch ups here and there. And it's very, very, very important, especially at the age of 50 upwards, may experience frequent joint aches and pains. Joint aches, it is normal. Somebody will wake up, our mothers and fathers always say that, oh, I have pains here and there. This morning, my knee, tomorrow, my back. They say it is spondylosis, it is this, it is that. It is also part of aging. And at this stage, we recommend that you do exercise, but not vigorous. You can go for a walk, but you don't, ex you don't exceed your limit. You do it within your limit. So sometimes we advise that before you do certain exercises, you seek the consent or the advice of your physician before you do certain things. Though the exercise is very important for everyone, but at this stage, at the age of 50 and upwards, because they are aging, and I mean, because of the aches and pains and all that, we, have, we always experience wear and tear, I mean, in, the, in our bodies. So as, we, they, I mean, we weaken and all that. So we advise that you seek medical advice from your doctor before you do certain exercises. And adults are expected to have at least two hours, 30 minutes of exercise on a regular basis. Not everyone will have that luxury. You can do it in the morning or after close of work in the evening, but it is always advisable for our own good. How hard do I need to exercise? That is one question we ask ourselves. How hard do I need to exercise to gain health benefits? Every small amount of exercise is better than none at all. So if at least when I wake up in the morning, I do a little jogging around my compound for say 30 minutes, it's better than doing nothing at all. I do setups, I do a little stretches. It is better than you don't do anything at all because day in, day out, the food that we eat, we have a lot of fat and all that. And it must be an activity that you enjoy. So if you enjoy jogging or you enjoy walking, you have to do it, but it should be comfortable. You don't have to go, you don't have to do something that wouldn't be so comfortable. I mean, you want to exceed your limits. Um, the body has, um, I mean, you don't have to do something that will worry you at the end of the day. So you have to do something, it has to be comfortable. So in conclusion, health and fitness boost one's immunity and reduces risk of medical complications whilst aging. It is also an anti-aging therapy. Thank you. Um, but there's, um, I mean, there's, um, I'm here for questions, so. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Auntie Theresa. Um, please, do we have any questions? If if you have a question, kindly note it so that. Oops. Yeah, if we have any questions, let's kindly note it so that. Yeah. Okay, Galaxy A ten S. Can you please unmute so that you ask your question? Yeah. Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity. Um, Auntie Elsie, God bless you for that wonderful delivery. Please, my question is, you know, as parents, especially mothers, we do a lot of chores. Mm -hmm. We lift, we squat, we hold, 
We do a lot of things, but at the time the day ends, you are so tired. Your heart is pounding. <laughs> and so sometimes I don't even have to uh, get to make time for exercise. And uh, daily house chores as women, a mm. form of exercise. Should we should we still set time aside and do and mm. um, and do this exercise because our, our work alone involves all the things you have talked about, even running around and chasing children <laughs> to do a thing or two. So please, that's my question. <laughs> oh, it's another form of exercise. It's also good. It's. It's a vigorous exercise, let me say. But you know, sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you can do a little stretches before you start your days, your daily chores. It is very good. Not that what mothers are doing is not an exercise. It is, but um, a little stretches here and there will also help. Yes. All right. Thank you very, thank you very much, Sister Laura. Kindly unmute your phone or your PC and then ask your question. Sister Laura, I see your hand up. Uh, she's having a problem with her body. I'm sure. Then I want to check if she's unmuted here. Okay, but please, does anyone else have another a question? Sister Philomena. I see your hand raised. Yes, thank you so much. And that was an insightful presentation from Elsie. Quite interesting and very pretty. And um, with a kind of uh, education we've taken part this afternoon or this evening, and with the kind of busy schedules that we all are, uh, we are all privy to, I don't think I, we can. I let me say I I for instance I wonder what time I will get to be able to say that I want to do some stretches or some setups before I leave for work. So can I say that going up my stairs every morning and then coming back to work every day is another form of exercise because I live on a stair on a story building. So moving up the stairs up and down is another form of exercise. Could that be same as one way or the other an exercise? Thank you very much, Auntie Philo. Yes, going up the stairs and climbing the stairs and descending is also another form of exercise. And I'm sure in the office too, you are on a story building, so you run around. So it is also another form of exercise. The most important thing is when we say fitness or exercise, um, it is shedding off a little fat and making the heart the heart function and pump blood to other parts of the body. That is what we are talking about. And it is also another form of exercise because running around, descending the stairs, and I mean, climbing and all that is, I also live on a story building. So descending and climbing is a good exercise. Let me put it that way. Yes. I have a question. All right. So um, those kind of exercises, will you say it is an enough exercise? Or yeah. well, it qualifies to be an exercise, but is it enough? I wouldn't say it is enough, but sometimes depending on what you do, somebody can you can have your office on the third floor and you have to descend every now and then going up and down, running the stairs, descending and ascending. It is another form of exercise. But that is not the only exercise. You can do other exercises, a little stretches, walking, as I said earlier in my presentation, that you do a little jogging, not within your room, not necessarily going 
outside if you know you can you wouldn't have the time but when you wake up you can do a little bit of the stretches here and there in addition to descending and ascending the staircase will also help thank you all right thank you okay. so much mr elsie um galaxy eight and s please i see your hand up so um thank you i want to just um make a little suggestion to the question I sister asked. Um, before my present condition, I remember some time ago, I made it, um, I made it as part of, of my schedule in the course of the week, how often I'll, I'll exercise. So I remember twice a week at least, I'll do, I downloaded some, exercise videos from YouTube, which I was following. And it was so good. So it, it's, it's all part of planning. If you plan that you wake up at this time, maybe after your quiet time, or just before you take your bath, you know, exercise, before you take your bath, and then kickstart the day, it will help. It, it, we just have to make time for everything. It will not just happen, it will not happen by, like, by chance. But then if you make time and put it in your schedule, that's maybe Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or, or Saturdays and Sundays, before I take my shower, I'll have a 10 minute exercise. Then it becomes part of your daily routine and you'll be able to follow. It is, it's quite difficult, but then if you commit to it, you, you'll be surprised how beneficial it will be to you. So that's just a little suggestion to the question I sister asked. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so I think Sister Rhoda's hand is up. Mm. Yes, um, to add to what our sister just shared, um, Chelsea, God bless you so much. Um, I would also want to add that it's very good that even though we might be quite busy, we still have a plan and we stick by it. Um, sister also mentioned that it should be something that you are comfortable doing. So um, what I was doing was that I had an app on my phone and it really made it easy. I just um, followed the app. I do what the cartoon is doing and it was really helpful and um, interesting. But my question is that, um, Sister Elsie, I was really happy when Sister Vera mentioned that you're a beauty consultant, right? <laughs> what, what I want to ask is that, you know, sometimes we know that how you look is also part of fitness. Yeah. And as ladies, you don't want to grow up and you are 50 and you already look like you are 70. Mm -hmm. The men don't want to grow old and already they have a very huge um, pouch in front of them. So mm -hmm. as Christians, how can, we, how, how can we really take that into perspective? Is it really important for me to aim to have a great shape like good hips and um, all that and work towards it actually make time and work towards it is it really important for a guy to like aim to have huge muscles as a christian and actually make time and work towards it if it's if it's not good why if it's good why and if it's good how can we actually work towards that Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Rhoda. <laughs> I mean, um, keeping, uh, did you see, keeping, um, looking good, looking good is very, very important. Very, 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 very important. You know, as ladies, should I say Christian ladies, um, sometimes when we get married, we think we've gotten all that we want. So we just forget about, we leave, should I say um, the word quote and unquote, we leave ourselves that we don't take very good care of ourselves. So we, we grow, should I say, we put on a little, so much weight that the shape that we used to have, should I say the, uh, the Coca-Cola shape, we lose it. But it is not ungodly. For you to keep for you to be in shape and for the men to also have their six packs now you see the three packs and this 
<laughs> that was just by the way. It is it is not ungodly. You are just keeping fit. You want to look healthy. So there is nothing wrong with it. But looking good is also part of I mean the exercise, keeping fit. Because when you keep fit, you can meet someone who is about 50 years and the person looks healthy and strong and younger than because exercising is an anti-aging therapy so it is good for you to look good and exercise at i mean at the same time yes and diet is also very important diet is very 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 important though we didn't talk about diet but it is equally important as in when you keep fit when you exercise when you are checking your health and all that you have to also check your diet it helps Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sister Nancy. Sister Elsie, sorry. Um, please, do we have any more questions? I see one question in the chat. Okay, it says, is it possible to quantify the amount of exercise we need for a day? And then how much will be enough for a day? Auntie Elsie. Sister Elsie, I think you are muted. Yes. Um, yeah, please. Please, didn't, you didn't hear I the didn't, question. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't hear the question. Okay, so let me take it again. It says, is it possible to quantify the amount of exercise we need for a day? And how much will be enough for a day? Okay. Um, in my presentation, I said that... Um, adults it's advisable that you do your exercise you should be within two and a half hours a day so it can be in the morning or in the evening so that's it and it is supposed to be five times in a week or every day but sometimes we advise that you know when you overstretch your muscles it has an effect so you can do it every other day but you should be conscious you should make it a conscious effort that you do the exercise. So it can be either every day or every other day. So maybe three times in a week or four times in a week. But it should be within two hours, 30 minutes. Yes, that is the estimated time for exercise. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, please, so please, I have a question, a quick question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please go on. Yeah. Please, um, in your presentation, you mentioned that um, meditation is good, yoga, meditation. And well, um, some of us, we don't really know much about yoga. All we know is that it's adopted from another religion. So as a Christian, how would you really know that yoga is okay for a Christian to practice? Um, how would you know? Is it really good for a Christian to practice yoga? That's my question. Thank you very much, Saruda. Um, with the yoga, I know that it was, uh, it, I think it's from India, yes, but I don't really have so much knowledge on yoga, though I know that it is another form, it is an exercise and it is, um, you meditate. But as a Christian, um, I wouldn't, I don't know what goes into the yoga. Though I know it is an exercise, but I can't really say much about it. That is, uh, I, 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 it's rather unfortunate I can't really educate more on yoga. But any other form of exercise is okay. Some people prefer doing the practice and doing the yoga, not in the sense of meditating but because it's more of stretches but i i would rather say that well you do the jogging you do the breast walking and all that and a little stretches here and there yes but after that then you come and see me for a massage so that you be relaxed you know thank you very much <laughs> thank you to auntie elsie please are there any more questions 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Kindly go ahead. Uh, ask the house, please. Where can I locate? Fat. I need a massage. Please, I can. I I didn't get your question. Where can I look? I need a massage. So where should I come? When and where? Oh, you need a massage. Okay, so then I'll when? I'll leave my contact so that you call me. We we'll talk about that. Okay. But then there is one exercise that we are overlooking, and that is dancing. It is very, very good for us to dance, especially as Christians. When you get to the house of God, we must make it a habit to dance, not only praise, but as you dance to praise God, you are dancing to exercise the body as well. So it's like yes. you are uh, uh, killing two, two birds with one stone. That is true, because dancing... Dancing is also another form of exercise. You know, when you dance, you, it makes you happy. You shed a lot of other people don't know about that aspect that it is also um, another form of fitness. But dance, you can dance at church, you can dance in your room, you can dance anywhere. So dancing is also another form of exercise and it is very good. Yes. That, that's really true. Um, I've actually seen YouTube um, apps, like apps that are talking about apps that um, help you to dance, you know, and like as you see that as the people are dancing, they're really enjoying themselves, but they are really working on their weight as well and their health. So I really agree with that. It's very good. God bless you. Okay, then I think um, there's a comment here and swimming to I think swimming is also a very good exercise. Yes, and that mm. really helps. Yes, <laughs> swimming is very good. Swimming, it's it's an exercise for the whole body because you use every part, your hands, your head, every part of your body is involved. So swimming is good. All right. God bless you. Um, um please um Quickly, I, I have a question um, concerning nutrition. I know um, probably there the, the are nutritionists online. Um, I think Sabigal is also a nutritionist, so maybe she can also help us with that. Um, what, what, what is the right kind of food we can, we can actually adopt to together with the exercise regime and the physical activity that will really help us? Um, I'll leave this question for the nutritionist to educate us more on it because my field is more of the fitness. So Auntie Abigail, please over to you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, talking about um, fitness, nutrition, and everything, I think sometimes when it comes to the nutrition, it, 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 you can't, I, I, would, I wouldn't say there's totally a one size, size fits all because um, what might really be helpful, fine, even though there are general things that would be very helpful for everyone, there are some things that might be individual. Okay, so for instance, talking about um, what kind of food would help you remain fit, for instance? Um, you see, for instance, to avoid gaining excessive weight, you would have to ensure that um, you are using much of the food that you are consuming, okay, to ensure that um, you don't have excess oops, baby. You don't have excess of it being stored. You don't have excess of it being stored to be converted into fat, okay? There are some of us who would eat a lot of food, not just food, but um, foods that are very fatty, okay? And that's one thing we really need to watch out for because it, it causes a lot of weight gain. So first of all, I would say that taking a lot of fatty foods, they don't really help. I believe most of us know that they don't really help us because then it contains a lot of energy that when not used is stored in our bodies. Aside that, taking a lot of um, sweet foods, um, yeah, sweetened foods, 
may not really be the best for us. But generally, um, to, to speak generally, we just, just like was mentioned by um, Auntie Elsie, we just need to make sure we are keeping fit so that we don't, we are not taking so much more food than we need, that we are not even using in the end. Because when you do that, your body is going to store so much of it. And then you end up gaining so much weight and not being very fit. And then secondly, sometimes some of us skip meals with the intention of, oh, sorry. Some of us skip meals with the intention of um, losing weight. And it doesn't really help to do that. Most of the times when you skip, I don't know how many of us have experienced that, but when you skip meals, when you come back and you want to eat, you tend to eat a lot more than you would normally eat because probably you'd have gone so hungry and the body just uses what it needs and stores the rest. So sometimes you think, oh, I'm skipping my meals to help me lose weight. I'm not taking break. I'm, I'm eating just once in a day to help me lose weight. But that once you end up eating like three times or four times what you normally eat. And it doesn't really help. The body just use that little, uses a little bit of it and then stores the rest. And it doesn't help you to keep fit. I don't know if I'm answering Auntie Rhoda's question or I'm going overboard. Well, okay. I think, yeah, it's the question has really been answered. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, I see Galaxy A 10 S again. Galaxy A 10 S, please your hand up again and Auntie Laura. So we'll pick one person first. Let's start with Auntie Laura since we missed her the first time. Okay. Please okay. with the nutrition. Eh? I wanted to add a little bit of certain things I've learned. Um, oh, I realized that um, skipping breakfast <laughs> actually makes it a lot. So like oh, that's if one. Breakfast, sorry. Skipping breakfast. Yes, please. When we skip breakfast, yes, mm -hmm. we gain a lot of because mm -hmm. as our system said, if you skip breakfast, if you are supposed to eat three times in a day, if you skip breakfast, when you eat at 12 o'clock or yes, yes. but that you are so hungry, so you end up consuming more food by, by 6 30 p.m. You realize you have taken more than you would have taken within a day. One thing I have also observe is that can uh, eat healthy nuts uh, diet plan. Healthy now I'm not really Hello. Hello. Okay, now I think this. Please, can you hear me? Yes, please. Now I can. It got to yes, a point. So with the fruit shake. Yeah, so with the fruit shake. Okay, I said with the, with the diet, as in with the afternoon meal, we can incorporate um, healthy nuts like cashew seeds, um, yeah. almond seeds, and any other like peanuts. They are also good. Or coconut, the hard ones. You can just take a little of it, and that alone can make you full for the afternoon. And with. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Auntie Laura. Thank you so much. Um, Galaxy A10 is, please, is your hand up again? Oh, it's still the first one. As we said, please, I want to add a little. Okay. But the diet and the weight. I heard from an expert some people that we, we all can't say we are going on a weight loss free. It first begins with what we call BMI, we call that body mass index. So you check your weight against your height, a calculation is done. If it's 80, 
24. It is 18 to yeah, 24, I guess, 24, 28. It means you are normal. It is, yes, it's up to 24, you are normal. It is above 24, that is 25, so it's if it's 30, you are obese. So if you if we do that as a starter, then you know your level. So that if you know you're overweight, then you know what you're working at. If you know you're working at. Then there are people who are underweight. Underweight. Sorry. Please, please. I, I hope I'm trying to make some real sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. So when it comes to the diet, we all don't go on up on a diet, no. Because if you check your BMI, you may be underweight and you don't need to go on a straight diet. You have to take a normal diet and then be, be normal, please. And then if you check and you are overweight or obese, then you know what your your aim is. So that is my little contribution when it comes to the diet. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to just add a little to the BMI, um, especially with the BMI, there are some people who would check their BMI and notice it's very high. It may not always be because um, you are overweight or you are obese. For some people, they are just muscular. Okay, and some people may have like, yeah, okay, let me say they are just ma very muscular. So um, if you have the opportunity to check your BMI and check your body fat percentage, it would really help you to know what exactly is going on. So that if your body fat percentage is very high, you can work on that. And then you, you, you work hard on the exercise part and then your diet, okay? So um, yes. There are some people who would check their BMI and get very alarmed, even though they know, hey, I'm on a very strict exercise regime and I'm, 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 I'm doing well with my diet. Okay, sometimes it's not always um, with, um, it's, it's not always the case when you have a high BMI value. So it's always good to have it checked with your body fat percentage so that you also know, you're sure that, let's say it's, it's because of your body fat that you have a very high BMI and not just because you are, you are muscular. I don't know if I'm making sense with that. Okay, so please, are there any more questions? Um, well, maybe this is maybe the last, it's, it's not a question, but it's just a comment before maybe Auntie Elsie comes in with her final um, remarks. Um, I want to add that um, gaining fitness and a good physical health starts from our minds. If you have a mentality that, oh, by 50, I'm so old and probably I have um, a, an illness, I have a chronic disease, I can't really lift things. You realize that by 50, you're actually living that kind of life. But if you have the mentality that oh, it's possible to be very healthy at the age of 80, to be able to jog, ride bicycle, swim at the, eight, at the age of 80, and I actually work towards it. I realized that by the age of 80, I'm actually living that kind of life. You know, I work with a lady, she's 75 years old, and the kind of boxes that you see her carrying at the age of 70, sometimes I wonder. Some of them, I even feel they are too heavy for me, you know? So it's very, very important that as we are young, we aim at attaining good health and we work towards it so that when we are old, we are still in that kind of um, good health and we have that kind of fitness. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to Auntie Rhoda. And just to add something briefly, it looks like, um, especially in Africa, we believe um, there are lots of people who have the mentality that um, if, 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 if you are obese, if, if, if you are very fat or big, it's a sign of good living. 
And there are some people who get very excited about that. And it's one thing we really need to be cautious about because um, being obese is associated with a lot of, um, what do you call it? It, it, it's, it's not the best. It's associated with a lot of health risks or it, it's, it could be an underlying cause for a lot of other illnesses. And so it's one thing that we should also be cautious about. Yeah, I just thought I'd add that. So um, if there are no further questions, I'd like to hand over to Auntie Elsie to take over. Thank you very much, Auntie Abigail. Uh, my final word. Laziness is a killer um, and stress. You we keep postponing when you feel lazy to exercise. It's, that is it. I mean, it becomes very difficult for you to make the conscious effort to exercise on a daily basis or even once in a while. So I will urge all of us to make the conscious effort to exercise and keep healthy and fit at all times. Because when we are healthy and when we are, I mean, when we are healthy and strong, it helps build a good nation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Auntie Elsie, for such an insightful... Um, and, uh, please, let me add one more thing. Um, I think one auntie asked where she can, uh, how she can get in contact with me. If you don't mind, I can leave my contact so that she'll get in touch with me. Sure, please, you can leave it in the chat so that um, as many people as want it can get access to it, please. Okay, all right. We'll be very grateful. All right. So thank you so much for such, a, such an insightful session. I really enjoyed it. And I believe that every one of us has picked certain things from it that would impact our lives greatly. Um, so at this point, we would want to take our announcement from Auntie Vicentia. So if she's around, would like to hand over to her. Thank you so much, Auntie Elsie. God bless you. God bless you so much, Auntie Elsie. Um, Sister Vicentia has to do something quickly. Um, he has a slight problem with his device, so he's not able. She's not able to make the announcement right now. Um, the announcement. I want to welcome all of us to Ex Evangelical Ladies. We know that Ex Evangelical Ladies is um, movement that God has brought together. Our main focus is discipleship and empowering ladies to achieve excellence in every area of life. You are very welcome. You are very happy to see you. And we are very grateful to God that today we've been able to discuss this very important um, topic. And we've had Mrs. Elsie Asari taking us through. Okay, so the main announcement is that next week we are, Next week, we are not going to have a session. God, when the next week Sunday, we are not going to have a session because next week Sunday, I think Friday is the first Friday of the month. So we are going to have our prayer meeting, our all night prayer on Friday. The details will be put on the page. We are going to use the same link. So we usually start on Friday. Um, I think it's 10 p.m. Ghana time. And then we end at five. So I will encourage you that if you can join us, you join us and you'll be blessed. And God willing, next month, we have other sessions that we are going to put up. So we would encourage you that you put your ears to the ground. If you really want to be part of Ex Evangelical Ladies and you want to receive constant updates, you can leave your contact in the chat. You can send a private chat to the host of this meeting and we'll surely get back to you. God bless you so much and stay blessed. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, Sister Rhoda. Okay, so in the absence of any further... Okay, in the absence of any further announcement, 
would like to take our closing prayer. So I'd like to invite Sister Patricia to give us the closing prayer. And then we share the grace. Sister Patricia, please, can you hear me? Okay, so 